is already commenting and asking questions. Any cool giveaways in the chat? everybody we are live it's a thursday at four o'clock and that means we are live uh we've already got people in our chat room aaron robbins says hello any cool giveaways in the chat room today uh yes yes in fact that is the top story we want to start there before we do anything else in today's show we want to talk about the sweepstakes we have running that ends literally in 14 minutes uh, the Phillips, uh, the, the sweepstakes is all about Phillips Hue. You can see the stuff here on the desk with me. Camera's going to switch right about now. Uh, now. Nope. 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 There it is. Uh, this is all the stuff that we're giving away. We have five packs of everything you see here uh, that we will have five winners announced today during this show. Later in the show, we will have all five winners' names picked from a hat, and uh, we will uh, contact you guys separately and all that to let you know that you have won. To get entered, let me give you the instructions uh, to show you how to get entered. If you're not already entered into the sweepstakes, you need to do this. The easiest way to find the sweepstakes page that you see on your screen now is to simply Google Crutchfield Sweepstakes, and this will be the first search result. It'll take you to this page where we've done a bunch of sweepstakes. This is like the third one, uh, and it's the current one. Uh, there are gonna be five winners of these Philips Hue lights. It's over $500 worth of stuff. There's links to all of the products you see on my desk here. Uh, I'll cover those here in a second. First and more importantly, how do you get entered? Enter your information right here, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. Type in your email address, type in your first name, your last name, I'm kidding, I'll tell you my last name. I'm not trying to be secretive. That's me, and uh, agree to the rules, and then hit enter. And now, you're not done. You are entered, but you're not done, uh, because the next thing you get to do is add more entries. The first one is the big one. There's a code word. We gave it out in the last Crutchfield Live two weeks ago. If you have that code word, you can click this and enter that code word to get an additional 25 entries into the sweepstakes. This will give you even more chances of being picked randomly as one of the winners. The code word, you see it on your screen, Roy G. Biv, all lowercase, all one word, no spaces, no dashes, no punctuation of any kind, no capital letters, all lowercase, Roy G. Biv. It's a, cold, it's a whole color thing because it's, we're tying it into these Philips Hue lights, right? Because they can do cool colors. That's the whole idea with Roy G. Biv, in case you're wondering. Uh, so get the, uh, get the code word, enter that, get yourself 25 extra entries into the drawing. Get that done in the next few minutes at 4.15. We are closing the sweepstakes. No more entries after 4.15. Later in the show, so about an hour from now, we will be announcing the five winners. So stay tuned if you happen to be one of the winners. Maybe you can chat with us on the, on the YouTube or on the Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Hopefully, hopefully you're excited about the Philips Hue lights. Um, it's a bunch of stuff. I'm going to just real quick show you guys what all is in, the draw, in, the, in these prize packs. Uh, so Crutchfield Live giveaway. We got five packs of this stuff. A, oh, there we go. Let me get back out of this here. Let me go back to the main page. Won't let me. Keeps taking me to the uh, code word page. Come on, stay right there. Nope, it's not doing it. How do I get back to that? Nope, nope, nope. 
Huh. All right. Well, I can't get back to the page with all the stuff, so I'm just going to tell you about it. Uh, there is a starter pack, which includes a Philips Hue bridge. Uh, that would be this guy right here. Uh, the bridge is what connects to your router. You got four color lights in this box. Uh, you also get two of these. These are ambiance bars. They go any color. You're controlled by the Philips Hue app. Put them behind your TV, on your shelf, things like that. Uh, so you got two of those. In addition to the ambiance lights, we've got two two packs of white lights. That means combined you get eight total bulbs four of which are in any color, and four of which are white. Uh, and you get a table lamp, which is the one here over on the far corner there. Uh, it's over $500 worth of Philips Hue, and there will be five winners of everything you see here. So uh, I'm trying to nail, I'm trying to load this on heavy here. Get entered now. Roy G. Biv, all lowercase, all one word. That's your code word. Don't, uh, don't miss out on the chance to win a bunch of really cool Philips Hue lights. If you don't have a smart house yet, uh, we don't, don't worry. We can help you if you have a high-speed internet and a router. That's all you need to get smart lights going on. Uh, we've got some people in the chat here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Aaron Robbins, I hope that answers your question. Yes, we're here, and yes, we got a cool giveaway. Retro VHS, I think you're here every time. Hey, hey, welcome back. Bruce Reed says, good afternoon from sunny Syracuse. Good afternoon. Good afternoon from Alabama with Retro VHS. Jorge Esparza, hi, guys. Medieval 1980, you're a frequent viewer. Thanks for coming back. Good afternoon to you as well. Tim Wheelock, afternoon to you. Jeremy on Facebook, what's up? Hope I can win. Love the Phillips Hue lights. Make sure you're entered there, Jeremy, and stay tuned for later in the show. We will announce the winners. Uh, Gregory Rindanello, hello from upstate New York. Melissa Watson, hey. Tiffany Poole, hi. Don Jacobson, let's, let's light this show up. I like the way you're thinking there. Jason Crutchfield is just awesome now. Awesome. Thank you so much for everybody that is watching. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. We're not just talking Philips Hue lights all day. We've got a bunch of stuff we're going to do. Uh, later in the show, uh, we will be looking at Crutchfield hashtags. Uh, we're, we're actually going to do a poll question that is all about car stereo installation tools because we're going to talk very specifically about a big installation that we did yesterday. We're going to talk about the planning of it. We're going to bring in one of our newest advisors. We're going to talk to him because we installed all this stuff in his car. Uh, and we're also going to make a Spotify playlist. But first, the poll question. Uh, so we'd love to hear your answer to this question. Uh, and it's going to be in the meeting chat or in the... Um, in the Facebook comments and on the YouTube in the pop out chat there. Uh, the question is, if you're going to do a car stereo install, what is your must have install tool? Now there's a ton of tools you could choose from. The only, we only get four choices on these poll questions. So we went with the ones that we know we absolutely have to have. What is your go-to install tool? A, a trim panel tool. You know, those things that will pry out the panels of your dash, your doors, things like that. Wire strippers. Undoubtedly, if you're call, installing car stereo, you will have to strip some wires, wire stripper. C, a multimeter, something that you use to test the polarity of wires and the continuity and voltage and stuff like that. Uh, if, it's, uh, if you don't know how to use a multimeter, I bet it's not your go-to tool. But if you do, you probably don't want to live without it and do car stereo installation. And lastly, a wire worm, uh, something that you would use to fish a wire through, say, the firewall of your car or somewhere under the dashboard behind your glove box, things like that. So trim panel tool, wire stripper, multimeter, and wire worm, those are your choices. What is your go-to car stereo installation tool? Got it? We all good? Sweepstakes, you guys, you guys for the sweepstakes, you got seven minutes left to get uh, entered into the Philips Hue sweepstakes. We're going to roll on in, into creating a Spotify playlist. Uh, since we're going to be talking so much about car stereo installation today, uh, we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had a Spotify playlist that was all about the songs that you should be jamming to while you're installing stuff? And we want to create this together with those of you watching. So if you have ideas for songs that should be on a playlist for, you know, you got your stereo cranked in the background, in your garage, you're installing stuff, you're taking your doors apart, you got music playing, what music motivates you and keeps you working during your install day? Uh, the spot, the list is the playlist we're creating. We've already started it. It is on Spotify, and uh, we are calling it 
songs to install by and so first thing you got to do is just go find crutchfield on spotify uh and uh as a uh, as a user of spotify and then look at our playlists and this is the one we are creating today we've already started by adding some songs of our own sledgehammer uh there's a there's a song by tool maybe you're seeing a theme here cars that go boom vehicle uh, we got some Rihanna on here, Shut Up and Drive. So we're thinking car-related stuff, but it doesn't have to be that narrowly focused. If you have music you think would sound good during an install day, add it to the list. Uh, if we see some coming in, I will read them out. Bruce says, anything from Iron Maiden. I love it. Uh, what else we got? Barnaby Berry, Happy Thursday from Los Angeles. Right on. Uh, Tim Wheelock, oh, we got that. All right, over on Facebook... Uh, oh, there's a question. We'll get to the question here in a minute, too. Uh, Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson? Isn't, isn't that Breakfast Club guy? Judd Nelson? Is that the right name? Is, do you just happen to have the same name as Judd Nelson, or is this Judd Nelson? I don't know. Uh, either way, right on. Long-time listener, first-time chatter. Very cool. Jason Wing. Crutchfield is just awesome now. Got you. Uh, luckily, uh, let's see. Ole de I don't know if I'm saying that right, maybe. Wireworm, he says, lucky I have a bare bones beetle. Well, we can fix that. If you want a stereo in your beetle, I'm sure we can get you set up. Uh, so send the songs in. If you want to put songs on this playlist, you send them to us. We'll add them to the list, uh, and we can create this playlist together uh, all throughout the show. So keep the, uh, keep the ideas coming. There is a link to the playlist in the uh, YouTube comments uh, as well. Um, before we get into anything else, I'm going to see what this question's all about here. So this is from a uh, community post from our YouTube channel. Uh, and the question is, will the Klipsch RC64II match up with the newly upgraded Klipsch RP8000F Series 2 from Colin Brown? Uh, I, I don't even have to look anything up to tell you that the answer to that is yes. Uh, there have been several different uh, series of Klipsch reference speakers over the years. Uh, the good news is they retain the same sort of tonality. Uh, they use the same tweeters, uh, basically the same design, the same drivers, and you can absolutely match up speakers from Klipsch reference from several years ago to Klipsch reference today, and they will absolutely work together, the center channel and your front left and right speakers. It's important to timbre match those so that your home theater makes sense and it sounds right. Uh, and you have no problem doing that. So feel free to be looking at current clip center channels to go with your older clips uh, or your or the other way around. Either way, you can match up your front three speakers. Uh, let's see. Bruce says, okay, a single song, Caught Somewhere in Time by Iron Maiden. More specific. Very nice. Jordan Wilson says, Push It by Salt and Peppa. That should get you working. Huffman says, Perov Stellar, all night. If, you have, if you're not familiar with Perov Stellar, look them up. That's some really fun music, and it is, uh, it's fun and fast-paced and will get you working good. Uh, also from our YouTube, we have another question. What is the difference between 4-ohm and 8-ohm speakers? Does it make any difference in sound other than its resistance? That's from Sidharth, and uh, yeah. That's a great question. It has actually something that is, we are, we are literally training our new advisors on that topic, like right now, uh, the difference in impedance on speakers. And uh, your question is spot on. Is there a difference in sound quality for speakers that are in every other way the same, they just have different impedance? And the answer is no. There is no difference in sound quality whatsoever. The impedance is only there to, uh, to determine how much power you're gonna get out of the amplifier your speaker is connected to. Uh, and we see this a lot in car audio with subwoofers, for example. We have subwoofers that are two ohm and four ohm and dual voice coils and different impedances. And the difference uh, is only, the only difference is electrically speaking, what happens when you connect it to your amp and how much power you're gonna get out of your amp. The different impedances does not have anything to do with the quality of the sound. They're the same speakers, the same materials, uh, the same basket, all of the stuff is the same. So there's no difference impedance and resistance. It's just a, uh, it's just a relationship between the speaker and the amp. Uh, and uh, let's see, Pat the Bunny says, your heart is a muscle. What is that going on? I don't understand what I'm seeing. Is that a song? That's a song for the playlist? Yeah. Pat the Bunny, is that an artist? I've never heard of Pat yeah, the Bunny. Punk rock, nice. Uh, the punk rock is a solid choice uh, for the uh, install bay, install day playlist. 
Blade, Blade, Braz, Blade Bazden says, uh, Phoenix, Arizona is in the house. Uh, one ohm is cooler than four ohm from Ole. Uh, yeah, it could think of it that way, right? If you're at one ohm, you're going to have less impedance and you're going to get more power out of your amplifier and more power is always better, uh, right? More power. If you can get more power, great. Probably more bass. Uh, it will make your amp work a little harder. So if, as long as you have an amp that can do one ohm, you should be good to go. I love it. A lot of interaction. Keep the songs coming. We will continue to add to the Spotify playlist all throughout the show. Uh, and, uh, and we will do that. We will, we will add our, so our own songs plus the ones that you are sending in as well. Um, next up, we're going to get into a car stereo installation and planning one. And we want to hopefully uh, use a real world planning of a real world installation to help you maybe plan your car stereo installation. And to do that, we're gonna bring in one of our newest advisors. His name is Tony. Uh, and Tony's gonna come on in. Uh, come on in, Tony. If you're looking deer in the headlights, he's like, oh my gosh, I've been at Crutchfield for five weeks and they're already putting me on Crutchfield Live. Yes, yes we are. Uh, we're gonna get this Phillips Hue stuff out of here and bring Tony in uh, because We've done what we were just talking about. We have, uh, we've actually planned and installed a bunch of stuff in his car. Uh, so we got the desk cleared out, made room for Tony. How are you? Good. What's up, y'all? Were you surprised when I said we're going to put you on Crutchfield Live? Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean, most companies might wait a little while, right? Right, you know. Uh, but uh, so you've been in sales training now for, this is like week number five. That's right. Um, yeah. And uh, before Crutchfield, what did you do? Um, I've done a couple of different things. Um, I was a, like a sponsored content creator on this app. Um, and I've been doing like some audio editing work. Uh, and I've always done like audio engineering freelance. So um, working here made sense for me. So you, you you're know. into music. I love music. You make music. Yeah. I make music too, yeah. Uh, so you know how to record music and all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. it, and so just knowing music and how it's made doesn't necessarily mean you know how to install a car stereo, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun to learn it, honestly, because like one of the things that I love about making music was then when I would listen to music, I would understand how they did it. And now like riding around in my car listening to the music, it's like I understand like how it's being played for uh, me. You uh, know, if you're making really music, cool. you got to think about the situations in which people will listen to the music you've created, right? And I think a, I think a lot of music gets listened to in a lot of cars. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the car test, that's always like the ultimate. Like when I'm done with the song, I got to go play it in my car and listen to it. it. Sounds good in the car. Then I know it's good, you know. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. I used to work at a radio station and the engineer, uh, he had like multiple pairs of horrible factory speakers installed in this car <laughs> on purpose so that he could hear what his radio station sounds like on the worst factory radio. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a yeah. good way to do it. If it sounds good on that, it should sound good on anything. Yeah, these, these days I test that like with the iPhone, you know, I play it on my iPhone, like through the iPhone just, speakers. Just the iPhone speaker, not yeah. even through headphones. Just No, just there, just, and it's like, it has to sound good on that too. How does it I sound know. with the iPhone in a cup? In a cup, that's that's a good trick. I right, because that, that yeah. amplifies it and sends the sound out even more. <laughs> that's what you do when you don't have a speaker. That's sure. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got some stuff coming in. Aaron Robbins. Uh, he's already talking about you. He says, "Looks very young." I thought the same <laughs> thing. You're not as young as you look. You don't have to tell your age to everybody, but uh, just so that they don't think you're like I don't know, in tenth grade or something. No, uh, you're. I'm you're an not. adult. You know, I work at Crutchfield, so I should tell you. He's an adult. We checked. He's allowed to work here. So <laughs> that's all you need to know. Yeah. Uh, no, but he's got some years of experience uh, mm -hmm. being an adult. So we're good. That's all. You don't need to know his age. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he looks young. Uh, let's see. Bruce said, I always thought 4 ohm was for car speakers and 8 ohms uh, were for home theater speakers. Or then you're absolutely right, uh, Bruce. 8 ohm speakers is the, the standard for home audio. Uh, most home speakers are 8 ohms. Most car speakers are 4 ohms. There are exceptions to all of that all over the place. We have home speakers that are 6 ohms and 4 ohms. We have car speakers that are 2 ohms and 4 ohms and 1 ohm and other impedances. Um, that's been fun to learn about these last few days. Have you, uh, have you ever had to think about speaker impedance before? No, I, I remember learning about it once in school because I took some classes on audio, but um, 
I didn't really understand it until training. Good. So, yeah. Okay, and I don't know if that came up through the mic, but uh, thunder and lightning is happening outside right now. Uh, so just a heads up, if we have a power blip, it's because of the storm and Mother Nature, and we'll do our best to get back on here live. Uh, so that's just a heads up in case the worst happens. Uh, we do have a generator, so even if we lose power, we should be able to get back up and running, assume, assuming everything comes back online really quick. Uh, all right, so you're here because we picked and I would say we, I picked you and your car uh, from, from our current crop. We have 10 people in our sales training class. Mm -hmm. I picked you, one, because you're in our Charlottesville location, which is where our studios are. Mm -hmm. So that eliminated half the class right there, and I'm sure they're bummed, but it's just the way that worked out. Uh, and I looked at all the cars of all the people left, and I thought your car seems to have the most opportunity for it, uh, to kind of be perfect for what we wanted to do. Uh, so tell everybody, what car do you drive? Um, first, I got to give a shout out to the rest of the training class. What's up, y'all? I know they're watching right now. Yeah. And my other training manager, Chris. Shout out to y'all. But um, I, I drive a Mazda 3 2010 hatchback, and it came uh, with Bose audio installed. Um, I bought it used. And How long have you had it? Um, not that long, less than a year. Maybe okay. Six months or so. So relatively new to you car. Yeah. Uh, and so I've been driving it for six months or so, and it's got an upgraded factory system. This is not the cheap base level factory system. It's the Bose system. Yeah. yeah. Uh, were you impressed? Like when you got the car, you're like, oh, sweet, Bose system. I'm not going to have to worry about that. It's going to sound good. Yeah. I mean, um, well, well, I guess we'll talk about it later, but eventually we found out that my front two speakers weren't working. Yeah. <laughs> And I didn't even know that. My previous car had been like a Nissan Versa, and I, the speakers, you know, like if you turn it up too loud, it started to make the farting sound in the bass, you know? Yes, <laughs> yes. So, um, of course, like I didn't really notice that I was missing sound from my new car because the four speakers in the back and the sub were still a huge improvement from what I had before. So, so from the yeah. Nissan Versa to the Mazda with the Bose, it's an upgrade. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we actually did this install that we're about to talk about yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can talk about it from the pre-planning stages. We can also you know, comment a little bit on the install itself. We're actually planning to bring you back in two weeks where we can go in, get into like how it actually went when we installed the stuff yesterday. And what are your thoughts on it two weeks later? It's like yeah. you've been driving around for two weeks. Uh, what is life like now? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so when we were looking at your car, we were thinking, what should we do to this car? The dash, the radio doesn't have any kind of fancy touchscreen or anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, were you using your iPhone with your factory radio? Yeah, I was. There was just an aux input. Just so an aux input. I would play my music through there and do my navigation through there and. Um, that was really starting to annoy me, like having to look down at my phone for navigation. So when I learned about like CarPlay, I was like, oh, I definitely want to get that. And even before we decided to, to do this install, I was already looking at receivers and trying to pick the one that I would like the most, you know? Yeah. Good. We're going to, in a second here, we're going to qualify your car on the website and see what kind of stuff it shows us uh, for what will fit, what will work, and what, it, that, what that looks like. I want to hit on some comments coming in here first. Uh, oh, Ole, thank you for your confidence in us. Crutchfield is impervious to electrical issues. Gosh, I wish that were true. Yeah. But uh, we do have a pretty awesome generator out there. So if we do get knocked out, we should be back on soon. Uh, Chris, our other trainer guy in Norton, uh, says nice shout out. He's appreciative of that. Uh, Ramon's first take movie reviews. I have a similar car, but a 2016. So this could be pretty relevant to you. May not be identical to what's going on in a 2016. Yours is a 2010, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But similar. Mm -hmm. Aaron says, car sound is almost always stereo, so two speakers being out usually isn't a major issue. I plan on only doing two speakers in my truck. I will tell you, I will tell you, you can comment on this. Mm -hmm. We found out yesterday that your front speakers weren't working at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, now you have front speakers that work. So just tell us, is that better to have speakers that are working in the front or not? It's way better. <laughs> it, it took about two seconds of listening to the song for me to realize that it was way better. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, let's see. Don on Facebook says, I installed an entire stereo with a Leatherman once. 
Just like a leather is like a like a belt, you know, you keep it in your belt and you pull it out and it's got like pliers and a knife and screwdrivers and scissors. Oh yeah, like a like a, like a, a, a yeah. multi tool. Wow, that's He's, impressive. Did the entire stereo installation with just that. That's Which, impressive, man. Yeah, good Leatherman. <laughs> good Leatherman is a good tool to have. We should add that to our list. Uh, Matthew Faulkner said, "Got all my car stereo with crutch field, vocals for the doors, 12-inch JL audio wedge, and a Rockford Fosgate punch amp. Can't wait to add the second woofer. Nice." Sick. You can never have enough bait. He's got a 12-inch awesome subwoofer with an awesome amp, and he wants more. Yeah. That's, you, I love it. That's fantastic. Go for it, man. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into looking up your car on the website just to see what it's like, how you can actually plan your system using crutchfield.com. So if you, uh, if you simply navigate on over to crutchfield.com, the easiest thing to do is to go right over here where it says car audio, click that. And the first thing uh, option you've got here is find what fits your vehicle. If you go into most of these categories, it will prompt you to enter your vehicle, but you can just go straight to the section where you can put in the make and model of your car. I've been doing some trainings. I'm gonna change this. We're not talking about a Ford Escape. We're talking about your car. So 2010, right? Yep, that's don't, right. Don't let me enter your car wrong. That's right. Uh, 2010 Mazda. And it's a Mazda 3. That's right. And yours is the hatchback, not the sedan. Yeah. And I love this thing about uh, our website. Uh, it brings up, in, if we have it, like we do a lot of vehicle research, uh, that's how we know what fits in cars. And our vehicle research team takes hundreds of pictures of cars. So when it comes time to identify which factory radio system your car came with, if we have a picture that helps, we'll show that here. And we did, we have a picture of the factory Bose logo right on the factory speaker. So if your car has the Bose logo, you want to select the picture. If it doesn't, select the one that says no image. And yours has the Bose logo. It does. Yeah. It does. So I'm going to click right on that. I'm going to click it. There we go. And now we're going to go to uh, the page that is like all about your vehicle. So there should be a picture of your car or one just like it. Mm -hmm. That looks like your, your car we had in the install bay yesterday. Mm -hmm. Right below that, a whole bunch of the pictures that we took, the best pictures, right? So you can start to look at what we found when we have got a Mazda 3 in our research facility and started taking it apart. Uh, these are pictures taken by Crutchfield. That's what, that's what your factory radio looked like. That's my old radio, yeah. That's what it looked like once we took the radio out of the dash. So you get an idea of what's actually behind there so you can kind of plan and start thinking about what it'll be like to replace your radio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are the doors. Now that would be a picture of the one without the Bose logo. Right. And the back door, the actual factory speakers themselves, which it's interesting that if you don't have the Bose system, you have this uh, like a six by eight speaker opening, but just a small round speaker. In fact, yours were the Bose speakers and they were, they were not big six by eights, yeah, were they? Yeah, they weren't. Mm -mm. They, they could have put a better speaker in there. Yeah, I thought that was curious. Right? Yeah. Weird. Uh, and so that's the actual opening in the door is a, a large oval opening that for some reason Mazda was like, no, 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 we're going to put small round speakers in there. Yeah. And you wonder why factory speakers don't sound great. Yeah. It took me a little while to get the speaker wired up to that. <laughs> What's going on here, Tony? That is the sub in the wheel well. Um, it's funny, it's, it's got a big sticker on it that says, this is a subwoofer. <laughs> That's right, that white <laughs> sticker does say, this is a subwoofer. <laughs> so you don't try to put your subwoofer on as a spare tire. Right. I, don't, I don't think you get very far, but. <laughs> yeah, you can't take your spare tire out without removing it. Yeah. Uh, and so you just unscrew that nut on the top and it comes up and you can take, you gotta take the subwoofer out. <laughs> Don't attach it to the wheel of your car, uh, and then you can put the spare on. Um, but how did it sound? Does it have a decent amount of bass? Yeah, it did. It did. It was nice. Um, That's it, a cool way to do a sub. Yeah. I honestly didn't even, I didn't do any research into the audio system of this car, like, before I bought it. Like, before my job at Crutchfield, I didn't think too heavily about, you know, audio systems in my car. Just as long as I had sound, I'd be pretty happy. Um, it wasn't until I changed my spare tire that I was like, what the heck is this? I was like, it says Bose on it, and then I figured it out, you know. And in case you're wondering, this is the Bose company you know and love, the company that makes the noise-canceling headphones and the Bose Wave radio. They make a ton of wonderful products, many of which are available at Crutchfield. They also have, like, a division of people that design OEM 
factory systems, mm -hmm. uh, which are absolutely an upgrade over like the base level factory system. Uh, and as good as they are, we can still do better. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. That's a and the a hub sub. And I was kind of when we started, we did like a before listening test yesterday. First thing in the morning, we went and listened to your factory system to hear how it sounded. I was like, oh, there's actually kind of a decent amount of bass here. Yeah. And good. so yeah, it wasn't weak bass, but uh, I mean, the after listening test, we have a lot more bass. Yeah. Uh, but that's the sub that's Definitely. in the factory system. Uh, that's the actual speaker in the subwoofer and. Oh yeah, your car has some like uh, tweeters mounted up high in the back seat. As yeah, part of the comp you know, like Bose system with a lot of speakers in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of the trainees were sitting in the back seat saying, "It actually sounds pretty good here in the back." Yeah, I know. It probably sounds sounded way better because I didn't have the front speakers. Because the front speakers <laughs> weren't working at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the back the back seat was getting the best audio, uh, and so pictures of these speakers as they come out of the car. Uh, and again, we have hundreds more pictures than this in our research file, uh, which is how we fulfill a database full of information. Uh, oh, look at that, tweeters in your sail panels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the front door speakers are down low, tweeters are up high, mm -hmm. right? And if you're gonna replace one, it's a really good idea to place, replace both. Mm -hmm. So we did that, we went with a component system. I'll show you which one here in a little bit. And that's, what the, that's where the tweeter goes. Tweeters are, Always a custom installation. Mm -hmm. We're putting the new tweeter in that location. We'll have to figure out how to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how we did it probably in two weeks uh, mm -hmm. when we get into the nitty gritty of actually doing this install. Uh, what else we got here? Some more factory speakers. The actual cargo area where we put your new subwoofer, the spare tire sub is underneath all of that. Mm -hmm. We measure all that stuff so we know how big a subwoofer box you can put in a car. We've started taking more pictures of under seats because a lot of subs will fit under seats and amps and stuff like that. So we try to get as much info as we can on each car. And uh, when we can, we put all those pictures or the best of our pictures on the website. So it can help planning your install, kind of knowing what you're gonna get into uh, and what it would take to get the old stuff out and put the new stuff in. Um, did you uh, look through any of that stuff as you were starting to think about what stereo you wanted in your car? Um, honestly, as a Crutchfield employee or trainee, I, I was looking into the back end of our uh, mm -hmm. website and the programs that we use to help people find um, what they would need. Didn't look so much through on the website, but looking through those pictures now, I wish I would have. Well, uh, yeah. So you have access to the full research file, yeah. right? With uh -huh. like 600 pictures. Uh -huh. uh, we just picked the top 20 or so and put them on the website. So you can look at that as well as the database that gets put together based on all of that research, mm -hmm. uh, which I, you don't like get to that. see at home. If you looked at it from home, you'd, your eyes would go crazy. Yeah. Uh, they, they go cross-eyed because it's a lot of information. Exactly. And that, that's why I said I wish I would have looked at that because it's nice. It's got it, it all right it simplifies. there. It's simplified. It's easy. It's nice. Cool. Uh, also, we point out here that we do have master sheets for your car. So these are detailed instructions for how to remove the factory radio, how to remove the factory speakers. Uh, and you get Very an helpful. email with those master sheets when you place an order. Mm -hmm. And they're free. That's a Crutchfield exclusive. Very, very helpful. We definitely wouldn't have been able to do it yesterday without that. Indeed. Uh, also, sometimes for not every car, but when we do, uh, we have what we call a Crutchfield research garage where one of our car stereo writers basically details everything like from a more subjective perspective, right? Where he's really giving his opinions on what it's like to put a stereo in this car. And so if we click here, we get an article about the Mazda 3. Uh, and John basically gives you the short story version of it and then a ton of detail on here is this, he might talk about how this radio is not that hard to pull out your factory radio. Mm -hmm. Like when you guys removed your factory stereo yesterday, was that easier or harder than you were expecting it to be? Um, easier for sure. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like something that would slide out very easily. But once you take those, um, the AC vents, once you take those and pry them out, then the rest of it just comes out. I mean, I you guys two screws. Yeah, you guys yeah. had this out in like five minutes yesterday. Yeah. You pried the vents, two screws, radio comes out. Yeah, really simple. That's nice. And so John will continue on talking about a lot of things, uh, what type of stereo you might want to put in there, how hard or easy it might be. Uh, and then he gets into speakers. I mean, like this is a really well thought out, like here's the deal. 
with installing in this car. So if you if you're if we have an article like that on your particular car, I recommend reading it uh, before you actually plan your install. It should give you ideas and an idea of what you can do or cannot do in your car. Uh, when you scroll down from there, now we've got uh, links to some major product categories. And this is where you start to think about what radio do you want in your car, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of the first thing, right? Uh, did, you, uh, did you have like a radio in mind? Were you thinking touchscreen? Were you thinking, like, what, what did you want in your new car stereo? Yeah, I, I kind of went back and forth between like a floating screen and one that would stay in the dash. But like I definitely wanted a touch screen with CarPlay. So here um, you can just select touch screen radios. That's 111 choices still, right? Yeah. Once you get there, you've got uh, a whole list of 111 touch screen radios. And the website knows that we're talking about your Mazda 3. So it can talk about uh, things like it'll tell you, does it actually fit your car, each radio? Mm -hmm. uh, it, or not, or will it be modified, or do you have to do something crazy to make it fit? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I interrupted you there. What what all did you want out of a new radio? Um, mostly CarPlay and touchscreen. I was thinking I wanted the capacitive because um, I like you know how it operates just like your phone does. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned CarPlay, uh, and that's a popular one. Uh, anybody with an iPhone, and they personally, if you want to use it while you're driving, there is a safe way to do that, and it's called CarPlay. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you integrate your phone with your radio, so all your phone icons appear on your stereo. It doesn't play any video while you're driving, which is just illegal and dangerous, uh, but it will let you do voice texting, make and receive calls, play your Spotify stuff, your Audible, your Apple Music, your YouTube music, whatever you got. Uh, it's a sweet way to do that. Plus. Google Maps, Apple Maps, all of that on their ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you happen to have an Android, there's an Android version of this called Android Auto. It's the same thing except for Android. Mm -hmm. And you knew about, did you know about that before coming to Crutchfield? Did you know that was a thing? Yeah, um, one time, uh, oh, shout out to my mom and dad too, they're watching. Hi but, mom. <laughs> uh, we got a rental, I think it was in, when we were in Florida, but we got a rental that had CarPlay in it and we all really liked that. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, that's first. Uh, I mean, yeah. I work here, and the first place I ever experienced CarPlay was in a rental car. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first time I'd actually, before I put one in my car, I was like, oh, this is great. I think this is something I want. Yeah. Cool. So you can just click this filter right here that says CarPlay on the website, and now we filtered out all the radios that don't have that. Uh, so we've gone from 111 radios down to 82 radios. Mm -hmm. uh, what else were you thinking? Uh, you mentioned capacitive touchscreen, right? Yes. Now, the radio we ended up with going, did it have a capacitive touchscreen? Yes, it did. Nice. Uh, yeah. So that is a touchscreen feature. Let's see here. Is it going to be here? Yeah. So we call those touchscreen swipeable, just because it feels more like your phone, like you were saying, like that glossy finish as opposed to that matte finish, which requires like a, like a fingernail Mm -hmm. to put pressure on the screen. So the capacitive is better, and we call that swipeable on the website. So if we filter for that, now we're down to 57 radios. Nice. Getting better. We're about halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've got a bunch of great choices. What else was important to you in a stereo? Um, I mean, those, those are the main things. I kind of thought about how big do I want the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like there's advantages and drawbacks to both things. As somebody who hadn't owned one before, like a smaller screen would sit in your dash, which to me seemed more like aesthetically pleasing, you yep. know, than like having the big thing out there floating around. But then I also thought like, that's kind of cool actually. It's kind of custom to have it out there floating around. So maybe I actually do want that. It's like. Yeah, so you I could, mean, you, we have a bunch of those to choose from, right? If you hit screen size larger than seven inches, most of those are going to be big floating screen radios. Yeah. Right? That's like an iPad sitting, you know, attached to your dash. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so, and those can be uh, nine inch touch screens, 10 inch, 11 inch. Uh, some of them are smaller, like seven inch. And we have a bunch of those to choose from. Uh, ultimately, we didn't go that way. That does bring the price up a little bit. Oh, definitely. To go yeah. floating touch screen. Definitely. Uh, so that was uh, what you wanted. You didn't end up with that. Yeah. So we're going to unselect the larger than seven inch touchscreen. And uh, what else was important to you? Um, I didn't 
think too much past that. Really, were you, I were mean, you thinking of, you might add amps at some point? Yeah, actually, yeah, compatibility like to upgrade my sound system later for so, sure. Yeah, I know that uh, we have trained every advisor mm -hmm. to think when I know my customer wants to add amps, there's something we can do in the radio to make it better when you add an amp. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been through training now for five weeks. I'm going to put you on the spot. What is it? What is it we're looking for from a radio? Preamp outputs. Preamp outputs. Got to have them, right? Now, how many? Uh, we've narrowed this list down to 50-something radios. 12 of them have five preamp outputs. 45 of them have six preamp outputs. Yeah. Which would you go with? Six. Six. Yeah. So that's going to be a pair of front a pair of rear and a pair of subwoofer preamp outputs. That's right. So if you wanted to add amps for your front speakers, your back speakers, and your subwoofer, you have the outputs you need to hook up a separate amp. Mm -hmm. That I recommend if you're even considering putting an amp in to get a, a head unit with six channel preamp outputs. Yeah. So we did that. And it's, Yours has six. It's really nice to just have to plug the RCAs in. And yeah, not, and RCA. Not, not think about tapping wires or exactly. anything like that, you know. Uh, and another thing that's important is those preamp outputs. Uh, outputs will sound better if they are high voltage preamp outputs. Yep. So we have. Uh, I'm going to select that because I knew you're going to want to add amps, and that we were going to include an amp as part of this install. So that gets us down to like 44 radios. Nice. Uh, and it's so I'm going to sort this by price low to high just to see what's the cheapest radio we could go with that meets all of your requirements. Um, we didn't talk about other things like satellite radio. Was that important to you? No. Not a subscriber? No. HD no. radio? Do you listen to local radio a lot? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Do you need built-in navigation? Mm, no, I've just got CarPlay. You, you, right. You can, yeah. you can do it on Google or Waze or Apple Maps. Uh, do you need, uh, what else might there be? Are you going to integrate a radar detector or anything like that? Maybe. Uh, right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the proper answer is no. Here in Virginia, we will not be integrating. If a, I move, uh, if I move to a different state where it's legal, I right. might do that. There you go. You know uh, good catch. <laughs> um, so we didn't need all of that stuff. If we did, we would have used some filters to narrow this down uh, even more. But uh, as it stands, this radio kind of rises to the top. This Boss BE sixty two CP. Yeah. Currently on sale for like two hundred bucks. It's a deal. Everything you just described that you actually wanted, you can get for 200 bucks. That's a deal. Let's do it. Is yeah. this, this is the radio we installed in your car yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's where we're starting with the radio. Now let's go back and think about speakers. If we go back to the uh, Outfit My Car page and scroll past the radios, now we can start to look at the speakers that go in your car. Mm -hmm. um, before I get onto speakers, I've got some stuff coming in and I feel bad if I don't uh, comment on the comments. So. From YouTube, what do we got here? Joe Joe Dirt said, I wish I remembered to enter for the Hue lights. I already own a few in my house. I'm sorry you missed it. Those sweepstakes uh, have closed, and we are finding out who's winner, who the winners will be, and we will announce those coming up soon. Uh, Ole says, 4 volts make amps better. 4 volt as opposed to like 2 volt preamp outputs. Higher voltage outputs do make your amp sound better. Absolutely right, Ole. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan Parker, the instructions that come with speakers make it so easy. I just bought and upgraded my Ram 1500 Crew Cab with Infinity speakers, and the master sheets made me entirely comfortable changing the dash and door speakers. That's kind of the point of our master sheets. That's these things right here. They come free with any purchase. If we have them for your car, we'll send them. Uh, let's see, Jeff Fulkerson says, I bought speakers for my CRV from Crutchfield a couple of months ago when they were on sale. Now I just need to find the time to get them installed. Yeah, I don't think we can help you with that. We don't sell free time. <laughs> if we did, we would. No, we don't. Uh, Nate uh, has a uh, playlist suggestion, Pink Floyd, wish you were here. And he also mentions that the wire worm is crucial. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, Nathan Schlenker, I think he, I think this is a question on YouTube. Opinion on Boss radios, and I was hoping somebody would ask this question. Uh, so let me go back to the Boss radio that we picked out, which is this BE sixty two CP. Boss as a brand, uh, and this is directly an answer to Nathan's question. You know, it's a brand we've had for a while now. And when we picked it up, most of us hadn't really heard of it. Uh, this might this predates your time at Crutchfield by a long ways. Uh, 
but we none of us were like, oh, Boss, we finally have Boss, because it was not a brand that was, it's not maybe a, a top tier A list, you know, top three best brands of car audio stereo systems ever, right? It's not that. Mm -hmm. uh, what they do, though, uh, is they make products that are going to fill a niche market. They do things less expensive than other companies. Uh, and uh, during the pandemic, they did something most other companies weren't able to do, mm. which was have stuff in stock. Yeah. Uh, and by that time, it was kind of cool because we already had a bunch of really positive reviews from customers that had purchased Boss radios mm -hmm. to, fall, to look at and go, well, people really like these. Uh, and I'm glad we have them in stock because you might want an Alpine or a Pioneer or a Kenwood, but you're going to have to wait on those. Mm. So maybe in the meantime, people might have bought these as a stopgap or they might have just said, all right, well, I just go with the boss, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is they're fantastic. People love them. The reviews continue to be really strong. People are load, uh, putting them in their cars. They love them. They write reviews. They send us pictures. And these boss radios uh, are, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. You, as the proud owner of a new boss radio uh, yep. in your Mazda, next, in two weeks, we're going to want to hear more. But just give us a preview. Like, are you happy? Just after less than 24 hours, are you happy with the Boss Radio? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, it's the cheapest one available that does everything that I wanted. Um, so I didn't expect to, like, be wowed. But, like, when I turned on the screen initially, I was just like, wow, that looks really good. Like, it's, it's a pretty screen. And, like, yeah, I don't know. It does everything. I, I mean, I used it to navigate this morning, and it was helpful. Google Maps? Waze. Apple Ma Ways, I like Waze. even better. Yeah. So yeah. you don't. Need, who needs a radar detector when you got Ways? Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so so it. I mean, it has a Call volume knob. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got here pretty fast, so I figured um, uh, it has a volume knob. A lot of radios don't have that, right? Boss is like, well, let's put a volume knob on these. People love it. Yeah. Uh, that's real convenient. Yeah. So uh, my opinion on them is uh, rising every day. Mm -hmm. um, I, at first, I didn't know much about them, and I've grown to basically love them because we have them available to sell. They do what they say they're going to do. They do it well. They're in stock. They work. They look great. Customers are loving them. Uh, and so my opinion on Boss Radios is, thank God, we have them as a brand. Like, yeah. it's great. All right. Back to speakers. Let's get back here and take a look at what it, uh, our website says we can do for your car, uh, your car speakers. So uh, the lower front door location, that's usually where your like a woofer is going to be. Mm -hmm. And it also says uh, for upper front doors, that's usually the tweeter. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the lower front door section. And what we're gonna find here is an interesting on your car. One of the reasons I like that we went with your car is because this is a pretty short list of speakers. Yeah, and it was. Why do you know? Can you tell everybody why? Why is there only nine pairs of speakers listed here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's because the the mount is really shallow. Uh, there's not there's not much room to fit a speaker that has a deeper mount. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, when we when we go look in our internal database and we can look at the minute detail, we can see that speakers with large magnets, speakers that you know, are too deep, are just not going to fit in these doors without making major modifications. Yeah. Uh, and so this list is the nine pairs of speakers we know will fit in your car without major modifications. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them come with separate tweeters, mm -hmm. some don't. Uh, and we knew right away we wanted to replace your woofers and your tweeters. Yep. So we were looking for that. We were looking for a component system, um, which is one of the filters here on the site. Uh, let's see here. Crossover. Oh. Let's see, do we have custom components? Well, it is one of the filters somewhere. Well, heck, we don't even need to use a filter. We're only looking at nine pairs of speakers. So it's not hard to find yeah. a component <laughs> system. Uh, we knew we didn't want ones with the tweeter built in, at least not for your front doors. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you're, you, you know music. You make music, right? So w you don't necessarily want to go with the cheapest thing that fits here. Yeah. Right? You want to go with something good. Um, so what stands out? to you on this list. We've got Kenwood, we've got Pioneer, Retro Sound, Power Bass, Rockford, JVC, Alpine, yeah. Hertz, a couple pairs of Hertz. What stands out to you and why? Well, I mean, for me personally, the Alpine, because I, I don't know, I just have this impression that they really pay good attention uh, 
it's a quality. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping that I would outfit my car with like all Alpine, which is still something I might try to do in the future. But um, they didn't have a component that would fit. No components that would so, fit. So yeah, that limited us to two options, I think, which was the Hertz, Hertz the, or the Rockford Fosgate. The Hertz K130, so five and a quarter woofers and a pair of tweeters or this Rockford Fosgate R152S, Wolfers Tweeters. Uh, and uh, ultimately you went with the Hertz. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, any any particular reason why we went with Hertz? Um, I know it's a, a weird question. Is there a particular reason? I mean, it was, uh, I guess, it's a little. It seemed a little nicer than the Rockford Fosgates. Like, so let's much. let's take a look. There is actually a very specific reason, uh, and I'm asking this because. Uh, and he's like, "Why are you asking me that?" Because I actually picked the Hertz yeah. um, for your car, and here's why I picked them. Uh, when we click here on this green where it says Woofer Fits, check out what happens on our website. This whole sidebar comes out where it talks about what you're going to have to do, uh, parts that you'll need to do the installation. Uh, some notes about the installation, and this note right here really trips up a lot of customers. Mm. Uh, replacing the low impedance factory speaker with a four ohm aftermarket speaker will result in lower volume levels. We've been talking about impedance. Some of you watching might have a question, why is this a thing here? Mm. Those, those factory Bose speakers are two ohm. Mm -hmm. And if we take them out and we put in new four ohm speakers, that's more impedance. Mm -hmm. More impedance means less power. Mm -hmm. You might not have as loud a sound with these new for, new speakers that should be better, but because they're higher impedance, it might make them might not be as loud. Right. Uh, they might sound better, but they might not be as loud. And that some people are like, oh, hold on, wait, hold on, I don't I don't want that. I don't want less volume. Right. Were you concerned about that when you started seeing this note? Um, no, because I knew we were also going to replace the radio. Um, so yeah, with your with your particular car, the yeah. Bo there's like a Bose amplifier in there, and that's what's powering yeah. these speakers. So that doesn't change when we replace the radio. Actually, yeah. And <laughs> uh, the good news is, is if you put in four ohm speakers mm -hmm. uh, to get to the same volume level, you might just have to turn your volume knob up a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, full disclosure, I, I really didn't notice that note. Beforehand. You didn't notice, yeah. Right. <laughs> so right. uh, note, notated for your one on your review in training. <laughs> Got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I hope the other trainees are laughing. That's a joke. I'm sure they are. <laughs> Good. Uh, so I noticed it when I was looking at your car, trying to figure out what we were going to do there, and I thought about yeah. that. And one of the things that we can do to help fix that problem is go with speakers that are very efficient. Mm -hmm. And these Hertz K130 components are very efficient. This is something we rate something called sensitivity. Mm -hmm. uh, the sensitivity rating on these speakers is 93. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about what's a good number for efficiency or sensitivity. Does 93 fall in the high, medium, or low efficiency category? It's higher. Yeah, that's high efficiency in a car speaker. That means the speaker is very efficient at converting the power into sound. Yep. And you'll get more sound out of a more efficient speaker. And so that's why we went with these Hertz K130s in the front. Uh, the speakers that we ended up putting in the rear were these X130s, and we can go back to the car uh, page and choose rear speakers just like that. We've got more choices in the back, but it was once we knew we were going Hertz in the front, we knew we wanted to go with Hertz speakers in the back. Mm -hmm. So we went with the two-way back there because you already got those separate tweeters. We don't need them, uh, another component system in there. Mm -hmm. So we can use this to filter it by brand. And find, yeah, with the Hertz, they're actually these same exact speakers that we were looking at before, the X130s. They are the five and a quarter two-way version of those components. Yep. Uh, so new stereo, four new speakers, and, uh, you know, probably not enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some bass. Yeah. So it, I, I recommended the sub that you ended up going with. Uh, yep. You were you told me you were looking at this on your own yes. before I told you what we had kind of picked out for your car. What would you have chosen, or did the subwoofer? Did you have an idea of what kind of subwoofer you wanted for your car? Um, I honestly didn't look too much at the subs because I knew I already had the one in the back, um, and I didn't have too much of an impression like of how that would change if I added one. But as I started looking, I. Um, 
I like the JL audio mm. for some reason. Just what kind of music do you listen to? Um, I listen to like a lot of hip hop, rap, some rock. Um, I listen to classical music too, some some jazz. Um, but mostly I'm listening to like hip hop and rap. So. And is that the kind of music you make as well? Yeah, for the most part. So yeah. bass heavy music. Yeah. So usually. So the factory Bose sub, although good, probably not enough bass in the in the, in the long run for you. Yeah, I did notice it didn't really have that like thump, that like crazy thump, which uh, you get when you add something else to it. Yeah. So sure. with the sub I went with for you, because uh, I was basing a little bit of this on price, right? Knowing we didn't want to spend a ton of money. Uh, and as well as space, I wasn't sure how much of your cargo area you were willing to give up. Uh, I've got a lot of experience with Kicker, so I started looking at the Kicker uh, enclosed subs. Kicker makes a ton of these mm. uh, boxes with Kicker subs in them. The box made by Kicker, the woofer is a Kicker woofer. It's all go to, it all goes together, and you just need to match it up to an amp. Uh, and this is the guy right here, the 48 CDF 104. So now, uh, in the back of your car is this 10-inch down-firing sub, uh, which, you know, 10-inch, is that big enough to give you big bass from, you know, rap music, hip-hop, dance music, stuff like that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive at 10 inches, for sure. Nice. Yeah. And uh, at this price, you're not, we're not talking about a hugely powerful sub either. Uh, in fact, this sub, uh, it's a 4-ohm sub, and it's only looking for... About 150 watts. It's all you need to power this. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't hard to find an amplifier that does that. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're picking out a sub, you're going to want a mono sub amp. Uh, that's what those are made for, is to power a subwoofer. And uh, what we're looking for is 150 watts at 4 ohms. Uh, the, um, the sweet spot for bass and subs and matching up a sub to an amp is 2 ohm. Mm -hmm. The sub box we picked out uh, happens to be four ohms, so we just need to find an amp that puts the right amount of power out at that right impedance. You mentioned JL Audio, and I know that their amps are pretty tight. By the yeah. way, we could have gone with Hertz Everything, or if you know, depending on the brands, we could have tried to make this all one brand. Mm -hmm. It would have been challenging in your car because of the limited number of speakers that fit. And uh, for one, I just wanted to give a lot of love to a lot of different brands. Uh, right here on Crutchfield Live. So we went Why with this not? JL Audio amp, this 250.1, uh, which puts out exactly the amount of power your subwoofer is rated to handle. Yeah, good match, for sure. I did good? Yeah. Good, <laughs> good job, JR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once we had all that stuff picked out, uh, we started adding it to cart. Uh, when you add it to cart, the website is going to prompt you to do things like pick out your installation gear. Oh, look, here's a video of us actually uh, in the install bay yesterday, planning out your system, planning out the install. This is all in the morning before we started doing any work on your car. Uh, this is the stuff that we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes. Uh, there's your installation kit for your radio, your Hertz speakers. That's the kicker sub right there. JL Audio amplifier, bunch of 12 gauge speaker wire. This is the stuff uh, that we actually put in your car. And right on top of that boss radio is Crutchfield Ready Harness. That's where, uh, I mean, we weren't looking for this to be any harder than it had to be in uh, yesterday. So we went ahead and we got Crutchfield Ready Harness service, um, which made it pretty nice, right? Because now you've just got a harness that plugs into your car. The other end plugs into the radio. And in your car, there was only a few extra wires to hook up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was very convenient. Yeah. For sure. We were working with limited time. Yeah, we, uh, we started this at 8 a.m. yesterday. We work 8 to 5 here in training, and we finished uh, at 4.55. Yep. <laughs> let you guys go five minutes early, because that's how nice I am. <laughs> uh, let's check in to see if we got any comments coming in. I've, uh, I see that we've got links into just about all the products we were just talking about, so if you want to see those for yourself, the Hertz speakers, the Boss Radio, JL Amp, uh, Kicker Sub, links to all that stuff. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Ha, uh, look, Ole has been with us the entire time. Had a 40 by 2 Boss amp that turned heads in 2003. Yeah, 80 watts uh, powering your sub, and uh, I'm sure it sounded awesome. Retro VHS, love any love my Hertz speakers. Some of the best speakers I've put in a car so far. The price point can't be beat. 
right? I mean, yeah. th these were not expensive speakers we put in your car. Yeah. Uh, and uh, would you say, uh, again, we're going to get more detail on your, like, your thoughts with it after two weeks, but initial impressions, they sound pretty good? They sound good. Nice. It's clean. And the other thing I wanted to say is, for anybody wondering about the impedance, um, I, I can't reach max volume, you know, like it, it gets louder than I needed to. So as it when, is. not, so you're saying when you turn it up, you, you stop turning it up because you've gotten to a volume where you're like, I don't need it to be any louder. Yeah. It's already too loud. It's not because when max. you turn it up, it starts distorting. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. Yeah. Sweet. It's just like, it's loud enough. I don't need to go any higher than this. So they provide all the sound I need. That's yeah. awesome. So there, the four ohm thing is not, was not an issue and there's proof. Love it. Uh, let's see, late 80s, I had the Alpine door speakers and rocking Pioneers in the back. I think it was a JVC head unit and Sherwood amp. Sounded good to me. Awesome. Brian Becker wants to know if he has to be present to win the Hue giveaways. No, you don't. We will email you if you happen to be a winner. We're coming up shortly on the announcement of the winners. So you're going to stick around for that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> uh, no need to be present to win. Good. And let's see here, add additional speakers with an eight channel amp. Yeah, you can go nuts. Uh, we're not gonna go nuts today, but yeah, you can go, you can add multiple amps, many channels, uh, all of that. Mm -hmm. Wow, must have had some great installers, uh, says Dylan. <laughs> That's actually one of our training uh, cohorts. And let's see here, he where, great. where can I get zero gauge products? Uh, the, the zero gauge, often referred to as one aught gauge, they are absolutely here on our website. Uh, if you want to get some one aught gauge power wire or an amp wiring kit, I can show you real quick. If you want to switch over to my computer, I'll show you where to find one aught gauge power wire. Uh, this is big stuff. If you pick out an amplifier, just go to the accessories and we'll show you the right size power wire. But if all you need is power wire, uh, go to car audio, go to car amplifiers. And on that page will be, of course, all the amplifiers, but also amplifier installation. And right in here, amp wiring kits where you can get a full kit with some one aught gauge wire. Or if you just want to buy raw power and ground cable, you can go right here. And I'll bet if we sort this price high to low, the more expensive stuff, which is the bigger stuff. There you go. T-Spec, one aught gauge uh, in multiple colors. Crutchfield, one aught gauge. So all your one aught gauge needs, we've got you covered. Uh, let's see here. Brand and model number, okay, good, such as splitters. Didn't see what all that's about. Let me check over here on Facebook. Ramon says, what's better for high frequency sound in a car? Tweeters under a windshield facing up towards the windshield or tweeters on doors like what Tony did. Mm -hmm. uh, that's funny, I, my, in my car, the front speakers are in the dash facing directly up into the windshield, which then bounces the sound back into the car. Mm -hmm. uh, and in your car, the tweeters are in those sail panels off to the side, facing kind of into the center of the car. Yeah. Uh, which one is better? Well, uh, if your new tweeters can be angled, I think, I think angling your tweeters directly at your ears is better than hoping that they reflect off the windshield directly at your ears. But if you can't angle them, that reflection off the windshield works pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, so either one is fine. If it was my choice, I would prefer them uh, on the side panels, but mm. I don't design cars. So yeah. we're kind of, we're kind of, you know, the factory tweeter location is often where we put new tweeters. Yeah. So that's kind of our guide. However, if I could put them anywhere, I would put them in the door panels up high, aimed right at my ear holes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that makes sense. There you go. <laughs> uh, Marquise Robinson says, I'm running a 10,000 watt system. I need approximately 600 uh, amps, what battery can I get? Uh, that's a little deeper than we're going to be able to do here right now on Crutchfield Live, Marquise. What I would l uh, advise you to do, call and talk to any of our advisors. They have been through our training uh, and they can help you get a new battery or they at least can advise you on getting a new battery. Uh, but so we can do that. Uh, that's a little deeper than we want. We kind of wanted to keep this pretty basic for today. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we didn't install a big enough system in Tony's car that he needs a new battery yet. Yeah. Someday, yeah. <laughs> someday you'll need a new battery. Uh, okay. So when Tony comes back in two weeks, we're going to be talking about how the installation went in his car yesterday and what he thinks of it now that he's had it for a couple weeks and he's listened to a bunch of different songs uh, and initial impressions, uh, longer lasting impressions. So you're going to, you, you up for doing that? Yeah, totally. 
be thinking about that as you're driving home tonight and every day for the next two weeks is what am I going to tell people? How do I like this? And feel free to be 100% honest. If there's something you don't like about it, I want to hear about that. Cool. If there's something you love about it and everything in between. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's talk about installation tools. We had a poll question earlier, uh, and that poll question was, what is your go-to installation tool? Uh, and we had a bunch of choices. I actually have a box. Our uh, video crew was nice enough to bring a box. Uh, what's that? Wire cutters. Wire, wire strippers. Wire cutters me. and strippers. Yeah. These do both. <laughs> this little section right here cuts wire. This section, when you put wire in it, it strips wire and yeah. they're fast and they're awesome. They're it's great. really only for small gauge wire, but man, when you got a bunch of speaker wires, a bunch of you know small power wires, you gotta have a pair of those. It's super helpful. Uh, let's see, panel tools, things like these guys right here. Here, take those. Yeah. We've got a bunch of different panel tools that you can choose from, different shapes, different sizes, different colors. Uh, you kind of have to have something like this to pry the panels out in your car, mm -hmm. uh, to get your radio out, to get your tweeters out, your speakers, your door panels. Got to have trim panel tools. Uh, let's see, another one on here was a multimeter. Uh, this multimeter with these little wires, you can use those to connect to like your car's factory speaker wire. Uh, your power wires, you can check things. If you, um, if you know how to use one of these, they are invaluable uh, when doing car stereo installation. Uh, and last but not least for our poll question, yes, there's plenty of other tools, but we only had room for four. Uh, our poll question uh, was uh, included the wire warm. Did you guys use this in the install yesterday? We did. We used it uh, to run the USB cable for CarPlay. Um, had to get it through the dash into the glove box. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We ran that through, taped the wire to it, pulled the wire through. Yeah. That's what a wire worm does. Uh, and, I mean, there's a bunch of other tools in here, but... Uh, for the poll question, I've got results coming in on YouTube. What do you think? Don't look at, don't look at my screen, Dan, or Tony. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Out of those four choices, what do you think wins number one with 50% of the vote? For most useful? Yeah. What is your go-to or your must-have install tool? 26 votes on YouTube. Wireworm. Um, no, it wasn't the wireworm. People seem to love... The wire strippers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once you've used this to strip those wires, you don't want to do a stereo without them. Uh, in second place was the trim panel removal tools. Multimeter came in third. The wire <laughs> worm was the least favorite. It, got, it must have got like one vote. I think somebody commented it earlier. That's why I guessed it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. They didn't influence enough people, apparently. Uh, let's see. Do we have, co we have votes coming in from Facebook? Did we do the poll on Facebook? Abby? No votes on Facebook? Pending. Pending. All right. Well, while you're tabulating the votes on Facebook, there's some other stuff in here that I would consider must-haves for installs. And a lot of this stuff, we have it on hand, of course, in our install bay. Um, these are Posi products. They make it possible to uh, strip your wire using these guys and then twist your wires together. Uh, those things are pretty sweet. You can use them to tap into your factory wiring. Uh, they are, uh, we have a wide selection of posi tool, uh, posi taps and posi connectors in our install bay. Uh, and here's another one I love. Uh, these are, uh, basically it's heat shrink tubing with solder in the middle. You can actually, it's kind of like a really fancy butt connector. You put your two wires that are stripped into one of these connectors and then run a heat gun over it or like a, a hair dryer. Mm. And it will melt the solder and solder your wires together and seal them up so that they are, they don't, moisture can't get in there afterwards. That is handy. These are sweet, especially uh, something like that for marine applications, things like that. You got to have stuff like that. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I mean, and there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I think we're good there. Uh, do we have Facebook votes yet? Nope. We did not have a Facebook poll. Everybody on Facebook, I'm so sorry we didn't get a poll out for you. Uh, so it's just YouTube wins, wire strippers, uh, and Facebook doesn't get to comment. Um, speaking of tools, this is a neat day to be talking about tools because literally today, product pages went live for a brand new brand of tools for Crutchfield. These tools have been out there. We just didn't have them. Um, now we have a new brand of tools at crutchfield.com. So uh, if we go back to our website, Landon, if you want to bring up my computer, I will show you how to find them. Uh, all these pages are going live now and they will become a little easier to find as time goes on. 
but I'm going to simply search for the name of the brand of tools, which is performance, performance tool, and search for that. And now you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that we've been using for years in our install bay, but we've never had it for sale. Oh, nice. uh, and I mean, if you're doing stereo installation for any length of time, you're going to want a Dremel or a, something known as a rotary tool, mm -hmm. a thing that spins and you can use it to grind and cut and sand and polish. Uh, a rotary tool is important. A new brand of uh, multimeter. Uh, this is a whole $28 kit that comes with a wire stripper, a wire cutters and a multimeter. We've got just basic tools like more trim panel removal tools, screwdrivers. We have a cordless drill now. We now sell a cordless drill. Nice. You will use one of those in, in car stereo install if you're doing much work there. 49-piece uh, threaded insert rivet kit. We've never sold things to do riveting before, but you might want to rivet stuff in. You can do that. Uh, plethora of connectors for different types of cars, uh, like the retaining clips and things like that trim piece clips that you know sometimes we break a clip when we're pulling a door apart and if you want to get a new one you gotta have to go to the dealer we might have them now nice. right in these huge packs of uh, of new clips and things like that tons of uh, here's a whole 26 piece screwdriver kit you might have a phillips head and a flathead but if it's not the right length and the right thickness uh it might not be the right screwdriver with a 26 piece screwdriver set, you're good to go. Yeah. Anyway, all of these literally went live on our website today. Uh, I've known about them for a while. I've been eagerly awaiting this and we thought, hey, we're on live today. Let's show it. Today is the day that you can now add these to your cart. Uh, and it looks like most of this stuff is in stock and ready to go. So if you're doing a stereo installation, get some tools to go with it. Right? Yeah. We are almost to the point where we're announcing winners. Uh, we, do we have, did we have any Crutchfield hashtags this week, guys? Uh, social media posts. If you are on social, if you're buying stuff and installing stuff from Crutchfield, we would love it if you would tag us on Instagram and such so that we can see your install. And, uh, and then maybe we'll even feature it here on Crutchfield Live. And I think we have a few of those that we'd like to uh, look at. I haven't really looked at these yet. These are... Take a look there, Tony. Uh, this is a real customer installing stuff and they've tagged us. Nice. And that is a live picture of them, uh, not live, but that is them doing the install. Nice. That's, that's kind of like what we were doing yesterday, right? Really just wrenching out your dash and... Going nice. for it. Yeah, let's do the next one here. Uh, oh boy, this looks like a... This looks like a Ford, if I've ever seen a Ford. Those uh, HVAC knobs look very Ford-like. So, three-year project on this one. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's see, the next one is, oh, that looks like a, uh, that's the after. Yeah. So the first picture was the before, this is the after. That looks great. Way better. Uh, yeah. Love the touch screen in there. That's pretty, si that's pretty tight, that's awesome. Oh, fancy. Multiple amplifiers mounted to a board, and that's pretty good. Let's see how good that wiring looks. Uh, I'm trying to zoom in. I've got it on my computer here. But come on, zoom in. There, there we go. There we go. My laptop is being weird, but oh, there we go. I got it. So we got an audio control amp, a Pioneer amp, and, wow. and a JL audio amp. And look at that power distribution. Man, that's that's no small job installing a multi-amp system like that. Uh, that's that's pretty awesome. It's got to sound sick. Yeah. Boy, we that's almost like what we saw in the install bay from your installation yesterday. Yeah. That's like a beauty shot of all of the stuff just after it's been unboxed. Uh, and uh, boy, that's an exciting moment when you open the box. You're like, oh man, this stuff's yeah. about to be in my car. Uh, it's a lot of work, but it is worth it in the end. That's fantastic. Cool. That's it for Crutchfield hashtags this week. Thank you for all those that have posted. Please keep those coming. We love featuring those on the show. <laughs> I think we're there. I think we're at the fun part. Are we there? <coughs> Excuse me. Let me embrace myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't tell you about this but when I asked you to come on live today, but we're at the end of the show, and uh, we have uh, we have figured out who the winners are for our Phillips Hue sweepstakes. Uh, I have the names, they're right here. They're right here. I'm about to read them out loud. Just a reminder, oh five winners, 
Each pack of, uh, each winner is going to get over $500 worth of Philips Hue lights, the ambiance lights, the table lamp, uh, the, the starter set, the white lights, the color lights, all of that stuff. Uh, and we have drawn the names from everybody that entered. Uh, we, it was, by the way, our biggest sweepstakes yet with the most people entered. The most individual people and the most total entries. So uh, that's awesome. So we had uh, five names come up. Here they are. Ferdinand D. from Los Angeles, California. Denton H. from Collinsville, Oklahoma. Clem V. from Wilson, North Carolina. Hamlin S. from Somerville, South Carolina. And Gregory R. from Rome, New York. Congratulations! Woo! <laughs> oh, there's more. There's more. I feel it coming. Oh my gosh. We got, we got, we have two confetti cannons that are about to blow. <laughs> they are not blowing. <laughs> well, just one confetti cannon did a nice job. I am covered in confetti. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. All right, my dog is in here. Is he okay? Dog <laughs> decided to remove himself from the studio for t t the time being, but he's fine. He has lived through, he doesn't like thunderstorms, so this probably wasn't great, but <laughs> he's fine. Is he okay, Matt? Good. He's not shaking or trembling or anything. He's just out of the line of fire. <laughs> Excellent. So congratulations to Ferdinand, Denton, Clem, Hamlin, and Gregory. Uh, if you are watching, please... Comment, say something. Uh, let me get back to my live comments here just to see if you have already done that. Uh, on YouTube, we've got Aaron Robbins says, congrats. I'm sorry it wasn't you, Aaron. I appreciate you being here today. Uh, Retro uh, VHS commenting on the Crutchfield hashtags. Love the stick shift. Very cool. Um, so if you happen to be one of the winners, please say something. If not, uh, I do want to tell you that we have another sweepstakes coming very soon, uh, starting in our next broadcast. So two weeks from today, that's Thursday, July 28th. Uh, that's when our next sweepstakes starts. Uh, and the, the, the brand of products we'll be doing a sweepstakes for is called Heos or Heos by Denon. Uh, Heos is like a multi-room wireless music system for your house. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can have speakers in all the different rooms of your house. They can be part of your home theater. You can uh, wire up some outdoor speakers, uh, and you can control them all from an app on your phone. You can play music from any streaming service uh, available and play different songs in each room. Uh, you can have uh, different volumes in each room. You can group them all together and have big party mode. Heos is awesome. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we saw that. Um, one of the days we came in, Huffy showed it to us. Ah, yes. Shout to Huffy. Uh, so, so yeah, <laughs> Heos is the uh, is the next sweepstakes. It starts next uh, on our next show, Thursday, July twenty eighth. That's when you'll get all the detail on how many prizes there will be, how many winners there will be, how much cool stuff we are going to be giving away. Uh, and we'll do the same thing. We'll do the whole code word thing, and we'll uh, reveal it a couple shows later. So, uh, yeah, tell your friends. Uh, share it out. Uh, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. Tell your friends how much fun it is to hang out with us here on Crutchfield Live. I say that, but you can tell me. Was this fun? So much fun. Yeah? Are you still willing I mean, to come back in two weeks? Especially if there's more confetti. Even even though even though we might shoot confetti at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Tony for coming in and being Thanks put on the spot uh, after being a brand new Crutchfield employee. Uh, and thank you to everybody working behind the scenes to feeding me comments, making this possible, the camera people, the producers, Landon for running the show. Thank you everybody for watching, for commenting, for hanging out with us. Uh, looking forward to doing it again in two weeks. We'll see you then.